when patents started, they started really as a way for open source to take place. So when you get a patent, you have to open source the designs. You have to tell people what you're doing and how you did it. And then that happens to be you know, under exclusive rights for the next 20 years, and that's where open source hardware differs a little bit. And I think that um, this is my belief that uh, open source hardware is the 21st century patent. Um, I think that uh, it's not only open sourcing innovation, but it's also democratizing innovation. So instead of having that 20 years of exclusive rights, instead you get an entire community of innovators to work with you and to uh, collaborate with you and to contribute to your um, hardware. Part of being um, an open source hardware company is you develop this ecosystem around your product, right? So we, we make and we sell some, you know, some number of hardware products, right? But because it's open source, other people can take it and they can make their own versions, they can make their own accessories, they can make the ones that really suit their needs. And as a result, you get this much kind of stronger community, this much bigger sort of movement. And so they were learning to cook. They're cooking the recipe. You have the intro computer programming class that's designing it. And then they put all the students together um, to actually build the circuits. Um, we wouldn't have dreamt up these collaborations. In a way, I find that the projects that are only interesting to me, I mean, they will consume me for two or three nights, but I will eventually go like, oh, okay, now I know enough. I don't need to worry about this anymore. But if it's something that other people also want to know, then I'll put more work into it. Uh, and I'll document it and I'll like really look at the process and all that. One of the ideas of patents is it gives you some time as the creator, as the inventor or something, right, to, to kind of recoup your investment on the thing. And one of the things that's been interesting, I guess, for Arduino is, you know, again, this stuff is getting like easier and easier to make. And so I feel like in some ways it just requires kind of less and less of that investment. So like you said, it's almost like, you know, that 20 year period, it's like you really only need, you know, six months or a year or something to, to really recoup what you what you put into it. And we actually manufacture and build these devices in Boulder, Colorado. So nine years ago, it started with me in a bedroom, and then here we are today with 135 employees. We build about 60,000 widgets a month, and we ship this stuff all over the world. I believe that throughout civilization, we, um, we invented the best things, sharing them and building on top of each other's inventions. And, and then uh, one day, the patent system came and started saying, you have to put these blocks around your inventions and prevent other people from building, and that was, um, that, so it's an interesting tool to, to protect uh, you know, your business, protect your ideas, but then it started becoming um, a very kind of defensive and, um, and counterproductive mechanism because you have companies that are in total lockdown that are preventing <coughs> other companies from innovating, preventing individuals from innovating, and it, it, it's become, it's a, I think it's a really broken system. So by open sourcing our designs, we enable our competitors to copy us, right? So within 12 to 14 weeks, our competitors can copy a device that we come up with. Well, this means that that forces us to innovate. It forces us to create something new every 12 to 14 weeks. The way I see it is that open source hardware uh, provides you with a clear um, development structure that gives you uh, speed and agility and low cost. Um, so just being able to kind of not deal, not worry about um, the IP universe, I mean, eliminates a tremendous amount of kind of heartache and time and energy. And so you can just kind of get rid of all of that investment to worry about when you think about starting a hardware business. Um, when I started raising money, I started, uh, uh, and this was last June, I started speaking to some investors and there were, uh, there's there's two reactions you get to that and they're, and I, in my experience, it's, it's sort of, it's really black and white. It's either you're absolutely insane, I don't know what, I'm, what you're talking about, goodbye, or uh, this is awesome, I think, um, uh, I, this is awesome, I really want to see frustration that you get with closed source hardware is that the moment you really love something and you want to get to know it better, it doesn't love you back, right? Because it's <laughs> closed and, and you can't open it, it has nasty labels on it, and, and you're going to get sued for opening it. The great thing about open source is that it allows people with a passion to really dig into it and, and peel back as far as they want to get and, and really do something that sort of adds to the community or does something really cool like big shooting flames or like trampolines. Even before Little Bits became a product, there was a page on the website um, that I called Dream Bits, and it was one line of text that you could write in what uh, what is a, uh, what, what, what would you like to invent? What is the little bit that you would like to see made? And I never thought anybody would really put things in it. I, ha I thought I had to seed it and all of that. And 
And every day now we have tens and hundreds of, of, uh, of submissions, things that really like you would not even imagine from people from people who are retired engineers, people who used to be in the Navy, kids who are in there uh, who are you know doing uh, uh, choir practice and they came up with an idea for something. Uh, stay at home moms, there's really all sorts of ideas from like I want to build a triple axis accelerometer or like a hover bit to uh, I want to make a fart alarm. Every you know? day that I worry about somebody copying me, every day that I go after somebody who's copied my design is one less day that I'm working on the next big thing.